Good morning, good news. How are you guys doing this morning? Happy Mother's Day, everybody. I know. Oh, maybe I should put this on. My bad. <laughs> so, sorry, AV team. That was, that was my fault. <laughs> All right, there we go. That's better, huh? All right. <laughs> sorry about that. Uh, but uh, happy Mother's Day. This is, the, this is the second year in a row it's actually snowed on Mother's Day, so I don't know what you mothers are doing to mess this thing up, but... I don't know. Hopefully we get it ne- ne- right next year. But no, happy Mother's Day. Thank you to all the moms and, and whatnot. I know I've got a, a, a great mom and a great wife, and, and, and I, I appreciate them so much. So thank you so much, uh, moms, for everything that you do. It's like it's literally the hardest job in the world. But uh, uh, we, are, uh, we are in our series, continuing our series in Elijah, and we're looking at the life of Elijah. And, and, and through this series, this, some of my favorite stories come from Elijah's life. I mean, this is, uh, we've seen him do some amazing things. Uh, I mean, and we're, uh, I mean, he prays for no rain, and it doesn't rain for three and a half years. I mean, just just prays, and then boom, done. No rain, three and a half years. Craziness. Uh, he, he prays for the first resurrection ever. I mean, never before in the history of all of mankind has God ever raised anybody from the dead, and he has the audacity to go to God and say, God, would you bring this boy back to life? And he prays over this dude, this, this boy, this, this uh, young man, and God listens to his prayer, he answers his prayer, and he raises him from the dead. Never before been done. I mean, that, that, that's crazy. I mean, he, he prays for fire to come down from heaven and burn up this offering, and, 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 and it burns up the offering, it burns up the wood, it burns up the soil, it burns up the water. I mean, I mean amazing things. Uh, really cool stories. In fact, the life of Elijah is really defined by this amazingly powerful prayer, this prayer life that he has. He prays for no rain, it doesn't rain. He prays for a resurrection, which has never happened before, and the dude's brought back to life. He prays that fire would come down from heaven and burn up this offering, and it does. I mean, this amazing, powerful prayer life that he has. And that's why I wanted to draw our attention to this morning. I wanted to draw our attention to this prayer life. What, what, what is this, uh, the, this prayer life that Elijah has and the amount, of, the amount of power that can come from prayer? And there's a lot of us that I think that, that we, we, found a, we found ourselves in places where we struggle. We're struggling with things, we're, 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 and we're praying, we're asking God, you know, God, take away this addiction. Take away, uh, he's, he's at, we're asking God, would, would you heal somebody? Some, somebody's sick, somebody's got cancer, somebody's got stuff, and, and we're praying for healing. Or, or we're praying, God, God, fix this relationship, fix my marriage, fix, fix my, uh, you know, I, I'm praying for my kids, you know, that, you know, may, maybe one of them's doing some things that is just, it's just crazy. And, and, and you're weeping for your kids, and God, God, help my kids. And at the end of it all, we find ourselves wondering, does prayer even work? Is this... Is prayer even real? Does God even hear us? I've, I've been there. I've, 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 I've been at the end of my rope. Does, I mean, is, is, is this just a waste of time? Does, does, does God even answer prayer? Is there any power in prayer? I've, I've, been there, I've been there a couple times in my life, several times in my life, and some of us, some of us are there right now. We're, we're wrestling with God. We're, we're praying to God. God, heal them. God, fix this relationship. And... And we're not seeing it. We're not seeing any movement. We're not seeing any answers. I can assure you that God does care. I can assure you that God hears and answers prayer. And I hope that after today we'll have some tools that we can use to effectively pray. And I want to look, uh, look at the life of Elijah and how he prays. How does Elijah pray through his life? Uh, uh, go ahead and uh, turn, turn in your Bibles. Uh, if you uh, grab, grab a Bible from the seat backs in front of you, or if you brought your Bible, turn to 1 Kings chapter 18, and we're going to be looking at verses 41 through 46. And so it's, it's, it's in your Bible's Old Testament, or if you can go to uversion.com, go to uversion.com, look up 1 Kings chapter 18, it'll be in uh, verse 41. We're going to be starting there, but uh, if you've missed part of the series, if you don't know what's going on up until this point, I wanted to kind of catch you up. See, there's um, the, the, the kingdom of Israel. Has, has, has had king, bad king after bad king after bad king. And right now, 
King Ahab, he is the worst king that has ever existed. I mean, he, is, I mean, he has brought him from worse to worse to worse to worse to worse. And he's, he's leading, he's actually leading people. I mean, he is the king of God's people. And he's taking God's people and he's leading them away so that they will worship other gods. They're, they're worshiping uh, the God of Baal. And, and, and he's encouraging this, and he's wanting this to happen. And so God tells Elijah, he shows up and says, go tell King Ahab that if he doesn't straighten his junk out and start, you know, pointing himself towards God, start worshiping God again, then there's going to be this huge drought. And so, so Elijah goes to the king and tells him to change his ways and turn to God, or there's going to be no rain. And so Elijah prays, and then there's no rain. There's no rain for three and a half years, not a single drop. I mean, crops are dying, livestock's dying, children are dying, people are dying. And, I, and, and so often, I mean, I mean, I read this story, and I, and I do, I mean, it's, it's easy to glaze over it, just kind of as a side note. God stopped the rain for three and a half years. Children are dying. People are dying. God will do anything to get your attention for the greater good, for his good, for God's good. He wants our attention. He's going to get our attention one way or another. And I just, I, I think sometimes we can kind of glaze over that. But, I mean, God is letting people, God, God is literally letting his people, you want to rely, rely on Baal? You want to rely on, and, and go to these other gods? Have it your way. Do it. He lets them have their way. And it's not going very well for them. Uh, but then, but then now, now we're coming to the p- spot in, in, in the story where, where Elijah's sensing God. He's saying, God's telling him that it's time for the rain to fall again. God's telling Elijah, it, it, it's, time to, it's time to stop this thing. I mean, he's literally fire rained down from heaven. All the people started believing in God, and God is the real God because the God, Baal, the little God from last week, he, didn't, he, he, couldn't, he couldn't bring the rain. He couldn't, bring, he couldn't burn up the offering. He couldn't do any of that. He's failed. Baal has failed their people, that, and they be, he been, they've been worshiping him. And then God shows up and does this amazing thing after, after Elijah prays. And that's where we're picking up our story today in 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 41 through 46. It says this, And Elijah said to Ahab, the king, Elijah said to King Ahab, Go, eat and drink, for there is the sound of heavy rain. And I don't know what he heard there, but, but there's a sound of heavy rain. Because later on in the story, it's still blue skies. But. So Ahab went off to eat and drink, but Elijah climbed to the top of Mount Carmel. He bent down to the ground and put his face between his knees. Go and look toward the sea, he told his servant. And he went up and looked. There is nothing there, he said. It's still blue skies. I don't know what he was hearing, but the sound of heavy rain's coming, I guess. But, but it's still blue skies. He went up, his servant went up, there's nothing. He's looking around, there, there, there's nothing going on. Seven times Elijah said, go back. And the seventh time the servant reported, a cloud as small as a man's hand is rising from the sea. And so Elijah said, go and tell Ahab, hitch up your chariot and go down before the rain stops you. Meanwhile, the the sky grew black with clouds and the wind rose and a heavy rain started falling. And and Ahab rode off to uh, Jezreel and the power of the Lord came on Elijah. Elijah prays. Elijah prays. And the rain comes. Amazing. Three and a half years, there hasn't been a drop. And Elijah prays, and here comes the rain. And I want to look at this prayer. I want to look at this prayer. Uh, that we'll, and, and in this prayer, I think we'll find four, uh, four qualities, really, of an effective prayer. If we want to have an effective prayer, if we want to, I mean, and it's not this magic thing like we're going to be able to bend God's will and make God do what we want, but, but there are some qualities that, that are in Elijah's prayers as, as, as we go through his story, as we go through his life, that, that, that he, I mean, he truly has some effective prayers, and it's, we have four qualities that really keep coming to the surface, and the first one is this, effective prayers are humble prayers. Effective prayers are humble prayers, and that's your first fill in the blank. Uh, I mean, Elijah climbs, he climbs up to the top of Mount Carmel again. I don't, I don't know, I mean, I'm all for working out, and I love hiking, but the amount of times that these guys go up and down this stinking mountain is excessive, I think. I mean, especially, I mean, they're kind of in the desert, right? There hasn't been rain for three and a half years. I've, I've got my camel back. When I just go up, you know, halfway up a mountain, I've got my camel back. I got all kinds of water. They're doing it a bunch, but... Uh, I think it's excessive, but the, he goes up there again, and so he goes, but he goes up there so that he can be alone with God. 
He goes up there so he can be alone with God, so he can focus on God. I mean, he wanted to give God his full attention. He wanted, he wanted God to have all of his attention, and so he set aside this time with God. You see, it wasn't, it wasn't enough to, for him to just be praying as he goes throughout his day. You know, it, it wasn't enough for him to just be praying like as he's driving to work and stuff like that. And that's good. I'm not saying that's bad. I mean, if, if, if you're praying while you're driving or praying while you're doing life or praying while you're doing the dishes or praying while you're doing laundry or, or whatever it is, that's awesome. But there are times in our lives where we need to go to God. We need to set aside time that we can go to God and we can focus solely on him. I'm not worried about somebody cutting me off. I'm not worried about folding the towels. I'm just focusing on God. There had been no rain for three and a half years. I mean, this was a huge prayer, and he needed to give God his full attention. And when he got there, look at 1 Kings uh, 18, verse 42. Look at verse 42 with me. He said this, But Elijah climbed to the top of Mount Carmel and bent down to the ground and put his face between his knees. I mean, can you picture it? Can you picture him up there? He, he, he climbed to the top of the mountain, and, and he kneels down. He kneels down and he puts his face between his knees. I mean, just, just completely, just humbles himself physically. He physically humbled, humbled himself, and it's a picture of what's going on, si- on, on inside spiritually. I mean, he's, he's, aligning his, he's aligning his outward appearance to, to, to be in line with what's going on in his heart, what's going on in him spiritually. I mean, this isn't just outward stuff. I mean, this is, this is bigger than that. He was spiritually humbled at that moment. He was spiritually humbled. I mean, he's, he realized that he's small. He couldn't bring the rain. He's inadequate. He's not strong enough to do that. He's not powerful enough to do that. He's, he's incapable. He needed it to rain, but he knew that he couldn't do it. He was humbling himself. This humbling of himself, it was, it, it was, it was him spiritually saying, God, I'm small. I'm tiny. I'm insignificant. I'm, I'm inadequate. I can't do this, God. But you're huge. You're, 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 God, you're big. God, you're almighty. You're powerful. You're, you're, you're holy. You're the sustainer. You're, you're the healer. You're the provider. You can provide the rain. You can change this world. You can crush this world if you want to. I'm just an ant on a hill. And if you want to stomp your foot on my little ant hill, you can. I am insignificant. I'm powerless. But God, you are huge. And he's got this, this attitude of humility, this uh, spiritually and physically. I mean, he's down on his knees, his head between his knees, uh, praying to God. He humbled himself because he knew that he could not bring the rain, but God can. God can. So often in my life, I, I pray to God. And, and I pray about my struggles. I pray about the things going on in my life. I pray, I give him praise. I mean, not, not all my prayers are just, God, gimme, gimme, gimme. I mean, I, I praise God for the good things, for the awesome things that are going on in my life, right? And, 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 I, and, I, and I pray those prayers, and I'm, and I'm heartfelt in that. And then I turn around, and then I take it back with my attitude of self-reliance, with my attitude of pride. And I don't leave it there. I take it back. I can, I, I, if, if things are going to change, I need to do something. If, if I'm going to change what's going on, then I need to move. I need to act. Or even when I'm thanking God, even when I'm thanking God, God, thank you for doing whatever it is in my life, I turn around and then I quietly congratulate myself because I'm doing such a good job myself. And I take it back. And it's this attitude of pride, not humility. Elijah went before God with humility in his action as he knelt, as he laid himself down before God, and spiritually because he knows that only God can bring the rain. Only God does these things in his life. And we just went through, uh, we just went through a series in the book of James, and James, James is one of my favorite books of the Bible. I love, I love the Timothys. I love James. They're just, I, they, they really jump out at me. And, and, and you know, uh, Elijah's in the Old Testament, and so I wanted to pop some uh, just kind of sprinkling some New Testament stuff because this attitude of prayer, and these, these attitudes and these things, the, the, the effectiveness of prayer, we see this in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. And I wanted to show you this uh, this morning as well. And in James chapter 4, verse 6, he says this, but he gives more grace, and that is why the scripture says, God opposes the proud, but he shows favor to the humble. If you're praying with a sense of pride, 
man, I did such a good job, or I can handle this, and I'm, I can go to God and I can pray about it. But God opposes the proud. He's not going to answer that prayer. He's opposing you if you're praying to him with, with this pride and self-reliance. He's, he opposes the proud, but he shows favor to the humble. And then again in verse 10, James chapter 4, verse 10, just a couple verses later, he says, Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will lift you up. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will lift you up. I mean, that is an amazing promise. Humility precedes the miraculous. This attitude of humility, I can't do this. I can't fix this situation. I can't do this stuff. That's when God will lift us up. That's when God will show us his favor. Humility comes first, and then he will lift us up. This number two, the second fill in the blank. Effective prayers are specific prayers. Effective prayers are specific prayers. And I mean, it's so easy to forget this aspect. At least it is for me. I mean, I can, go, I can, I can honestly be so wishy-washy sometimes when, when I'm praying. You know, I, I, I go to God and I say, God, be with us. Or, or, or God, give me strength. God, move in a mighty way. You know, God help me. God work in this situation. And they're, they're, they're so wishy-washy. They're just kind of, it's, it's almost like I'm just kind of throwing stuff out there. Elijah, every time he was praying for something, man, he was specific. God, I want you to raise this boy from the dead. God, I want you to stop the rain for three and a half years. God, I want you to make it rain again. He knew what he was asking God. He was specific. Look at verse 43. He, uh, he's bent down, he's praying, he's humbling himself, he's, he's on his knees, he's got his head between his knees, and then he tells his servant, he says, go and look toward the sea, he told his servant. He went up and looked, and there was nothing there. He needed it to rain, and he's asking God for the rain. He's, he's, he's specific, and then he checked on the status of that prayer. I prayed that it was going to rain, hey, go check and see if it's coming. I'm praying that it's going to rain. Go check and see if it's coming, right? I mean, we need to be able to humbly become before God and without shame but with this boldness and with this courage. We need to ask God the specific prayer. How do we want God to move in our lives? How do we want God to fix things? How do we want, what do we want God to do? To, to, to give, to ask God that specific prayer that God would move, that God would work on our behalf. Again in James chapter 4, verse 2, it says this, you do not have... Because you do not ask God. We don't, we don't have, we don't, we don't have because we do not ask God. We need to be specific in our prayers. What do we want God to do? I mean, it's a pretty simple verse. We need to ask God specifically. A couple weeks ago, we had Dave and Lynn Johnson. They are missionaries down in Mexico, and they were, they were here. They were giving reports. It was really cool. That was the first time I had, to, uh, I had a chance to meet them. I know several of you guys have been on those mission trips down there. You've met them before, and it was a really cool reunion. Uh, but, 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 but Dave was telling this story about how, about how uh, he prayed to God to add one angel to his ministry. He's got this ministry, and they, they call him the angels. And, and, and these angels, they're, they're, they're young people. They're teens. They're you know, middle school, high school aged. Uh, young people who have really latched onto this idea of service, really latched onto this idea of, of spreading God's word. And so he prayed to God, God, this year would you add one more angel to this ministry? And God did. God added one more. That's exactly what he asked for. And then he prayed the next year, God, would you, would you add one more this year? And then that year God added one more. God answered that prayer exactly the way he prayed it. Then he asked, then, then, then he got to thinking, what if, why am I only praying for one? <laughs> why, why don't I pray for more than that? You know, and, and so he said, God, just add a bunch. And, 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 and it almost got a little washy, but what if, what if he would have prayed for five? What if he would have went to God humbly and, and specifically said, God, I, w- I want five new angels this year. God, I want ten more angels this year. God gave him exactly what he asked for. He asked for one. And he got one. What if he asked for 20? I don't know. I mean, I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to dig on him because he's done some amazing things down there in Mexico, and, and we're going there again. If, if you guys want to go to San Vicente uh, this year on a missions trip, uh, you know, just put San Vicente or Mexico mission trip or whatever on your connection card. I mean, it's, it's, it, we're going down there again to do some amazing things. But, but I mean, it, 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 it is. You do not have because you do not ask. What, what are you not asking for? I mean, I, I, you do not have because you do not ask. Effective prayers 
are specific prayers, effective prayers are humble prayers, and number three, effective prayers are persistent prayers. Look at verse 43 again, continuing in verse 43. Uh, Elijah says, go and look toward the sea, he told his servant. And he went up and looked. There is nothing there, he said. Seven times Elijah said, go back. Seven times Elijah said, go back. And I, and I, I mean, Elijah's up there, he's humbled himself, he's praying this specific prayer. And he says to his servant, okay, I, 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 I've prayed, okay, okay. God, God send the rain. And I don't know, I mean, it doesn't tell us exactly what he prayed. I mean, it was just, it was just this prayer and humility. He's down on his knees. He's got his face to the ground. He's praying specifically, God, bring the rain. And he tells his servant, okay, go, go up and check. Goes up and checks. I mean, up and down this mountain. I don't know, these dudes are crazy. Um, but he goes up. He goes and looks. There's nothing there. So, so Elijah says, okay, wait a minute. Wait a minute, okay. Okay, okay, go check it out again. Okay, nothing there. Okay, okay. Ho- hold on, hold on. Okay, now go and check. Okay, seven times, right? Seven different times he's doing this. He prays again and again and again, and there's nothing. There's nothing. Over and over and over again, the servant's coming back. Nothing. There's nothing there, Elijah. Nothing. I, I don't know. Again, and then so he prays. Seven times he does it. Over and over and over again. And what you don't hear Elijah say after God doesn't answer, God didn't answer him. Over and over again. That what he didn't say was, you know, prayer doesn't work. God's not answering my prayer. God doesn't hear me. God won't answer me. No, he's, Elijah is laser focused. This is going to happen. God, I want it to, I, I need the rain. Send the rain. Go and check it out. Over and over and over again, he prays this specific prayer. He's laser focused in on this specific prayer, and he just prays, and he prays, and he prays, and he prays, and he prays, and then he prays again, and he prays some more. And he did the same thing with, with the dead boy. I mean, a couple, couple, three weeks ago, or however long it was ago, when he was, when he was praying for God to raise this boy back from the dead. It never happened before. It just blows my mind that never in the history of mankind, he just got it in his head like, oh, God will raise him from the dead. And, and, but he prays over him three different times. God didn't answer him on the first time. God didn't answer him on the second time. And he prays finally the third time, and God answers his prayer. It was over and over and over again. And this is what I love, and this is what I need to work on. Elijah doesn't allow his outward circumstances of what's going on around him to affect his inward assurance. Did you catch that? Elijah does not let the the outward circumstances of what's going on in his world, he doesn't allow all the crap that's going on in his world around him to affect his inward assurance. He knows that God's going to answer his prayer. He knows that God's going to show up. He's coming to him in humility. He knows that God is going to move. And even though things aren't looking like they're moving, seven different times the servant comes back, I don't know what to tell you about There ain't nothing. It's blue skies. It doesn't slow him down. He prays, and he prays, and he prays, and he continues to pray, and he continues to pray. He doesn't quit. He doesn't say that this doesn't work. He doesn't get frustrated. He doesn't throw in the towel. He just prays. He's persistent, persistently praying. Our next verse out of James, I I have in the Amplified Version of the Bible. In the Amplified Version of the Bible, it's my favorite version to read out of. It's my favorite version to study out of. 90% of my reading that I do in the Bible is out of the Amplified Version. And and it's because it it really breaks things down. I mean, it is very word-for-word literal translation as far as what the original text says in the original Greek and the original Hebrew. But then they break it down so 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 it makes sense. And it says this in uh, James chapter 5, verse 16. It says this, The earnest heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available. It is dynamic in its working. I love that verse. The earnest, heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available. It is dynamic in its working. I mean, it, it, is, it is earnest. It is heartfelt. It is continued. It is over and over and over again. It's not, I mean, I mean that is a wicked cool verse. And so many times when we're, when we're down, and we feel like God isn't answering. We're up against these struggles. We're up against these battles. We need to remember this verse. We need to remember that that earnest, heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available. I mean, it works dynamically. And it's when we're persistent in our prayer that it becomes dynamic and it's working. What have you quit praying for? 
What have you quit praying for? What is it that, 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 you've, that you've given up on? Maybe it's your marriage. You've prayed for your marriage, and you've prayed again, and you've prayed again, and you're not seeing God work. You're not seeing God move. You're not seeing God fix. You're not seeing God answer. Maybe it's a job. Maybe, maybe it's a relationship with a friend or kids, or maybe it's your finances. And you've just given up. The earnest, heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous powerful power available. It is dynamic in its working. Effective prayers are humble, they're specific, they're persistent. And the last one is this, effective prayers are expectant prayers. Effective prayers are expectant prayers. I, I love this part. The, the, this part. Ooh, that, was, that was weird. <laughs> I'm a little gassy. Um, <laughs> I love this part. <laughs> and I think, I think so often we can just glide by this. Because we know it's going to rain. Right? I mean, and, 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 and we know that things are going to happen. We know that God's moving in Elijah's life. I mean, we've, we've heard this story before. We know that God's going to make it rain. And so we, I think we glide by this. But look at verse 44. The seventh time the servant reported, a cloud as small of a man's hand is rising, to the, rising from the sea. So Elijah said, go and tell Ahab, hitch up your chariot and go down before the rain stops you. Right? Here's what the servant didn't say. Elijah there is a thunderstorm coming. I mean, there are huge clouds, huge black gray clouds coming up over the horizon. He didn't say any of that. He said, no, there's a little itty-bitty cloud about the size of a man's hand rising up out of the sea. Now, I don't know where you guys live, but I live in Colorado. If I, if I wake up in the morning and I look outside, I go out on my deck and I look around and I see blue skies all around me. And I look over at the mountains and I see this little of a cloud I'm not grabbing my rain jacket right I'm putting my shorts on I'm putting my flip-flops on I'm, I'm it's gonna be a hot warm dry day in Colorado right I mean I mean it's just a little I mean it's a it's as small as a man's hand and I love Elijah I love Elijah because because Elijah I mean there's this little teeny tiny cloud and Elijah responds let's go we got to get out of here before we're stuck in the mud. Go tell the king. The rains are coming. Monsoons are coming. I mean, we're talking flash floods. I mean, send out the sirens. I mean, evacuate the city. Move. I mean, there's, I mean it's going to storm. Gigantic. Because this showed up. You know? I love Elijah. He expected God to answer. That the servant came back, and, and there's just this little thing sticking up out of the water. And he says, God answered it. He expected it. He knew it was going to happen. I mean, if it's me, I'm checking my phone. What's the percentage of chance of rain, right? Oh, you got a 30% chance? I'm not, you know, I'm not even worrying about it. What does a Doppler show? I'm waiting to actually feel the raindrops on my head. Oh, so 30% chance was actually kind of, right? You know, I mean, it's Elijah expected God to answer. Elijah put everything into action. I mean, he sees this little wisp of a cloud, and he puts everything into action. I mean, I mean, the, the, he knew God was going to move crazy. God was going to do the miraculous. He expected God to answer. Look at verse 45, continuing on. Meanwhile, the sky grew black with clouds. After he already evacuated the city, after he already told the king, hey, hey hitch up your wagon, buddy, because it's going to get muddy. Meanwhile, the sky grew black with clouds, and the wind rose, and a heavy rain started falling. And Ahab went off to Jezreel, and the power of the Lord came on Elijah. God answers prayers. God moves amazingly, in amazingly powerful ways on behalf of his people. Humble, specific, persistent, and expective prayers. And God can do some amazing things. In Mark 11, sorry, I had to jump out of James. In Mark 11, still the New Testament, though, verse 24, it says this, Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. Whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. That's an amazing verse, right? 
I think a lot of times, honestly, this verse can be taken the wrong way. I mean, if, if we look at this verse and say, okay, I want a Corvette and I want it for free, you know, and I really believe that God's going to deliver, I, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> if I already believe that I have it, I'm mean, God's gonna God will answer my prayer, but it will probably be answered with a no. Um, but I mean, and I think as we as we go through prayer and as we look at these effective ways that we can pray, we really need to keep in mind that there's not a magic wand that we just wave to get what we want, so that God will so that God will answer whatever. I mean, we pray when we pray with confident faith. That our prayers have power. That, I mean, they can truly overcome the greatest obstacles. They can, and they will. However, prayer is not this engine by which we overcome the unwillingness of God. When we pray in Jesus' name, we need to be confident of God's response. We've got to know that God's going to answer. But what we ask must be compatible with his teaching, with his life, with his death. There are some things that we shouldn't ask for God. We, there are some things that we shouldn't ask from God. There are some things that God, when we ask, that God will not give. I mean, they're very much in line with a, like a wise parent, right? I mean, a, a wise parent is, 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 is not going to give the child something that's going to cause them harm. If my child is asking me, please, I want to play with the rat poison, and they truly believe that they're going to get it from me if they ask long enough. And I mean, I, don't, I know my kids, it is over and over and over again. They are persistent. But if they're asking for rat poison, I'm going to tell them no. We may receive the answers that we don't, do not want. I mean, when we humbly go to God and we ask him for these things persistently, expecting him to answer, we may get answers that we don't want. We may find things that we're not looking for. We may, we, I mean, doors may be open that we don't expect. I mean, Paul, uh, Paul in the New Testament, he wrote most of the New Testament, and he prayed. He prayed humbly, th I mean, three times. I mean, this is, I mean, this is picture perfect of, of the effective prayer. He, pr he prayed, prayed three times, humbly, specific, persistent, and expectant that this thorn in his flesh would be removed. And we don't know what that was, where it was, if it was a stomach ailment or whatever it was. It was something physically that was wrong with Paul. And he persistently asked, asked God specifically to remove this thing. And he asked him over and over and over again in humility. And the answer came back that he would have to live with this thorn. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9, it says, God told Paul, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in your weakness. It may not be the answer we're looking for, but God will move. And in that situation, when God's power is made perfect in your weakness, God's moving in a mighty way. But it wasn't the answer that Paul necessarily wanted to begin with. God answers prayer, and there is power in prayer. And I think so often we let go of it. We give up on it. But we can't. Because God does some amazing thing. The earnest, heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous powerful power available. It is dynamic and it's working. Believe that God is going to move and believe that he's going to work. And he will. He will. Please pray with me. And Father God, I... I thank you so much for, for Elijah. <clears throat> I mean, that, th th this dude's wicked cool. I, I, I love reading these stories. I love seeing how you work and how you move, God. And I pray that it is an example to us of, of the kind of power you can have in our lives. In James, I, uh, another place in James, and I didn't, I didn't put this one on the screen, but, but James says, Elijah was just another man. He was a man like you and me. He wasn't anything special, but when he prayed, it didn't rain for three and a half years. When he prayed, he, God moved and raised a man from the dead for the first time of all of human history. When, when Elijah prayed, the rain fell, the fire fell. I mean, it was, I mean when Elijah prays, amazing things happen, and he's just a normal guy. He's just another man. He's, he's nothing special. God, I pray, I pray that as we go about our lives, as, as we face the struggles in our lives, as we, as, we, as, we, as we praise you, God, for the things that you do, God, that we would be able to come to you humbly. God, looking at you with specific prayers, saying, thank you, God, for this specific situation. God, please help me in this other specific situation. God, 
that we would persistently ask you and that we would expect you to move. Because you are the God that answers prayers. You are the God that shows up. God, I pray for every single one of us that, 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 that we would grab a hold of this example and that we would put it to practice in our lives daily. That we would set aside time with you and humbly pray and expect you to move, expect you to work, expect you to do the miraculous. God, help us to turn our hearts towards you and our, and our thoughts and our deeds and, 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 and what we want and what we desire, God. And as we, as we seek out what you want for our lives, that you would move in those prayers and give us the desires of our hearts which are aligned with your heart, God. God, I pray for a renewed faith in you and an assurance that you answer prayer, that we wouldn't give up, that we would continue to come to you as people who are tiny ants on this little anthill that you could squish. But you love us, and so you don't. But And you love us to the point where you were, you're intimately involved in our lives. God, I pray that you move as we pray, as we turn our lives to you. God, we love you so much, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.